Hello, welcome back to City Stutters. My name is Jess. It's been a little while since I've done a video. Uh, we've had several things going on this past weekend and I have a cold and I've been out for a few days with a pretty icky cold. So I thought I'd get a video out today. I'm feeling a little better. Um, we are going to be talking about my first month with quail and how that's going things I've learned, things I like, things I don't like, and maybe some tips for people who are considering raising quails uh, so you don't make the same mistakes that I make. So the first thing that really shocked me was how fast these quail actually grow. Now, if you get eggs and they hatch, they go from little day-old chick to six weeks old, and at that point, they start laying eggs already. These girls are about a week away from lane for me and they have grown really 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 fast so that's one thing that really i mean i've heard that they grow fast but it shocked me how fast they truly grow this little guy's a little less than a week old so they go from this to full grown within just a few weeks they're super cute aren't they So another thing that really surprised me was how much they eat. These guys are little piggies. When they're tiny, like the chick I just showed you, they don't go through a whole lot of food, but when they go through that growth spurt and they get their feathers, they eat a lot. So I've learned a th few things to combat that food problem. One is that you can supplement their feed with things like mealworms. But something that's even cheaper than mealworms that I supplement their feed with are chicken eggs. So I scramble them up and I actually save all the eggshells that I use from my chickens. And once they start laying, I'll use their eggshells as well. You can boil them for 10 minutes, put it in a 250 degree oven until they dry and then grind them up like in a coffee ground grinder till they turn into a really fine powder and then you can mix it in their feed and they get extra calcium. So those are some great ways to make their food last longer, go further. So every morning they get two scrambled eggs and then I add the shells in with their feed. Something else you can do is ferment their feed. Um, I kind of got away from that this week because I've been busy and sick. So I'm gonna get back into fermenting their feed again that makes it bulk up and go longer. It makes, they eat less when they have fermented feed for some reason. So um, that's another food saving cost for the quail that I've learned. And the last thing about their food that I wanted to talk about are the rising costs of food for your chickens, for your quail, whatever it be, your poultry. Prices are really going up and I've noticed that um, this, bag right here this is a small little bag as you can see it's not that big five pounds right when I first bought these they were five bucks a piece and that wasn't too bad and I thought oh I'll buy four twenty dollars not bad right twenty pounds for twenty dollars this now on Amazon is like two for thirty something they're about seventeen dollars a piece if you buy them individually and i'm thinking for how fast my birds go through food this is not sustainable and it's not even worth the eggs to me i could go to the store and buy probably organic eggs for cheaper than it costs me to feed these guys so what i decided to do was go to our local fleet farm and see if they had anything cheaper or bulkier that i could buy maybe in bulk and this is what i found so this is a 40 pound bag of this is layer feed i bought the layer feed because pretty soon my girls are going to start laying this cost me less than this did now on amazon so my uh suggestion to you is do not buy your feed on amazon it's just way too expensive go to your local farm store um fleet farm whatever sells farm supplies Go get your feed there. It's significantly cheaper. The next thing I want to address is the mess. So I have learned <laughs> the hard way that quail are really messy. When I looked into raising quail, everybody said that. Everybody said how messy they were. And I thought, yeah, they're going to be messy. It's going to be fine. But they really are messier than I expected. 
Um, I these guys used to be on a potty pad um, on top of the wire on the cage and then I'd put wood chips on that. Within a couple of hours the wood chips would all be outside of the cage and on the ground and just wasted. So I quit doing that because it was a waste of money. Those potty pads are not cheap. The wood chips, you know, that adds up cost. So the only place that they have wood chips are inside their little box here. I have a potty pad down with a few wood chips in there, but even that, I don't give them a lot because they'll just kick it out and make a mess out of it. So the mess has gone down significantly since I quit giving them wood chips. Um, I have also slowed down on the sand baths. Those are actually really good for them. It helps them clean themselves, but um, I don't give it to them as often because I'll put sand in a little container and by the end of the day the sand is all gone and um, down in the tray that holds their poop and stuff. So. so the last thing that I want to talk about are the quail droppings. Now for some people that might be kind of gross, but for gardeners like myself, uh, nothing is better for, for compost in your garden. So. You have your wood chips, um, which no matter what, I have wood chips in the cage down here in the bottom tray that holds the droppings. Those are wood chips down there to keep the smell down. Uh, so I'm going to have a nice balance of wood chips, which is a carbon source, and nitrogen, which comes from their droppings. So that is so good for a compost, you guys. If you are a gardener and you have quail or chickens, throw that stuff in your compost, let it break down and compost down and it'll make a great fertilizer in a few months or maybe next year. But one thing I do have to say, don't ever put it directly in your garden. Um, it is hot compost, so it will burn your plants. Um, other animals, I believe bunnies are one of them. You can take their poop and put it directly in your garden, not with quail. You need to let that compost down. So while their droppings might be a gross thing to have to deal with for some people, for me, it's a blessing. Um, it makes great compost, good food for my garden. The last thing I want to talk about is how addicting it becomes to have this hobby or have this way of raising meat and eggs for your own family. Once you hatch these babies yourself, I'm just going to give you a little view of this one. They come in all different colors and their eggs are all different. Um, it's just so fun to mess with genetics and see, you know, if you breed certain kinds together, what you're going to get from the babies. Um, I would say even more than doing it for just meat and egg production, it's just fun. It's, it's a joy to raise these little things, to watch them struggle through their eggs for the first time and to grow up. Um, and it's really fun for my kids too. They've really enjoyed this process. So overall, it's been a very positive experience for my family and I have no regrets. I love raising quail and hopefully soon we'll be raising chickens as well and I can bring you along on that journey. They will be outside, not inside, but um, yes, I would highly recommend this to anybody who's looking for ways to be self-sufficient and have their own meat sources or their own egg sources. I hope my first month of quail raising, my uh, mistakes I've made and suggestions will help you along your journey too. Thanks for joining me today and please like and subscribe, help our channel grow. And once again, um, my offer still stands. If we get 100 subscriptions, I will give away free seeds. Till next time.